1142, sorry if you're running a bit late, I'm calling to order the June 13th uh, CC board meeting. Thank you everybody for being here. Um, at any point during the meeting, um, to make public comment, at points during the meeting when the meeting chair requests the public comment, members of the board of public shall indicate their desire to speak. Sorry about my voice, everybody. All public comments shall be addressed to the board of directors and limited to three minutes per speaker. The board director may choose to respond to comments or to request staff to respond at the conclusion of the public comment period. All right, um, we don't need to call to order because you need to see us. So let's talk about our agenda. Is there any questions or needing to move anything on the agenda this evening or can we adopt it as is? No. All, right. All right, I think it was adopted. I'm going to adopt that. Great. All right, um, let's talk about the consent calendar. Um, any questions from the board? Okay, any sort of questions about the documents about the bill paid? Um, I had a question about the bill paid, but it was answered in the report about the water fountains under those were going. So, um, all right, would the public like to comment on the consent calendar? No. All right, um, do I have a motion to approve the consent calendar? Second. Second. Chris moved. Chris and. And then okay. Bill and Lisa seconded at the exact same time. I'll get Bill's one. He's another. All right. All right. Continue. Continue. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're shorting out of time. Up to snuff. Okay, we are moving on. What? Oh, okay. All in favor of the consent calendar? Aye. 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 Motion passes. All right. Moving on to D, public comment open to time for items not on the agenda. Speakers may comment only on non-agenda items within the subject matter jurisdiction of the district. The board may not take action on, consider, or debate items not on the agenda except under narrow circumstances. Meaning statutory tasks. Response to comments on non-agenda items will be limited to factual information or clarifying questions from staff and the board at the conclusion of the public comment period. The president may refer the matter to staff for future meeting agendas. Agenda. Stephen, would you like to comment? Yes. Uh, Thank you. Um, so last month uh, we talked about I talked about kindness and uh, the value. I hope in everybody's hearts here, kindness. Um, and uh, so it's everybody's responsibility, including my own. Um, and I also mentioned that our seniors, uh, specifically uh, Marilyn Boatwright, was having some issues and wouldn't it be great if we could do something for our seniors. And one project that I uh, do believe that will help our seniors is to put more park benches in our park. And she loves the idea. In fact, she wanted to talk to you about that, Kathleen. I don't know her since you were a baby, or, you know. Um, and probably you too, Chris. So I was walking with her. We were chatting. She got tired, of course, and uh, sat down on the picnic table in front of the maintenance shed unit and fell off and rolled underneath the picnic table. And she was fine, um, although it was kind of challenging to deal with the situation. I asked a passerby to help me out. He would kind of look at me strange, but he finally came over and we both picked her up. The reason I'm talking about this is there were some comments made last month that I, I really kind of, I was upset about. He said, we don't know seniors. This is not part of the CSD. And I simply ask you, do you know all the kids in the community? Is taking care of the kids in the community of our interest? Tonight, as you go about your business, I want you to, before you, before you go to bed, brush your teeth, look at your gray hairs, look at the, the wrinkles that you now have, as we all have, as we age. You're going to be in the same spot, and your actions tonight and the actions in the near future are going to affect the marine wood that you inherit. Are you going to be the person sitting on the park bench, rolling off it, needing assistance to get up? If you're lucky, the answer is yes, because you've lived a long time. Kindness is your responsibility. Lastly, I want to talk about the um, uh, playground uh, equipment under consideration. I'm so disappointed that you got a completely boring and typical playground structure that you're looking at. These structures are made in Asia. They start at $15,000 and go up. I can't believe you can't find something more architecturally significant and exciting for our community. I know, unfortunately, you're probably both yes on it because that's the way it goes. But once again, I'm asking you to embrace the community of the future that you are now, that you are now voting on. Thank you very much for your time. Wait, 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 wait. May I, is she okay? Is she's, okay? She's, yeah, she did not break anything. Okay. That's what you mean. May I respond? She struggled. Yeah, go ahead. I have a talk with her on Friday. Okay. Um, I'm going to bring up and have a conversation with Luke on the side and see what we can do. But I just wanted to let you know that I heard her loud and clear. And yes, I did talk to her. They just started like 500 bucks. I get it. So I spent 200 grand for a All I agreed to was bring it up Thank you. and address it and talk about it. No but it's remain, no promises remain, but I just want to, I'm telling you that. You said be kindness and be kindness. I, 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 I know you're a kind person. I'm, I'm, just telling you, okay, I'm just saying that your action that you just brought tonight yeah. has already been moved forward and I've already talked to you. Okay, so super. Thank so, you. And I, I did want to make a statement about the playground structure that we have a limited budget. We, 200 grand buys you a lot. Uh, Stephen, okay. hold on one second. I listened to you without interruption. I Kindness, as you keep saying. We only got... We got five bids. One bid we had to take off the bat because it was way too expensive. One bid we saw, they didn't actually complete the bid as we requested, so we couldn't even consider them. The three other bids that we got were within budget. I believe that those companies actually had U.S. manufactured things. So yes, we are trying to keep it local. And we would love to have wood. We would love to have it look like this magical forest thing. We can't afford that. The one bid that came in with wooden things had like three items on there, and it was over $150,000, right? More than what we requested as the maximum bid. So we are looking at it. We do want to do best. The life cycle of this playground, we're going to continue talking about this later because it's actually in mm -hmm. Parks and Rec there. And next time, could you please not comment on things that are on the agenda in your open oh, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, All right. Moving on to district matters. We're looking at resolution number 23, 2023-05, determining the 2023-2024 appropriations limit on tax receipts. Um, and we're looking to approve it. Okay. <laughs> okay. I mean, this is something I'm going to do over here. Um, <coughs> and nobody wants to discuss, we can just put out four votes. I'm happy with that. Yeah. And straightforward yeah. every year. All right, um, all those in favor? Uh, aye. Aye. Uh, motion passes. All right, moving on to draft policy for pay schedule review of non-representative full-time positions. We're looking to approve the um, pay schedule review. Um, Eric, did you want to start off with talking about it and not add anything or at least I can't add anything that you need because we spoke to you about this? 
I just wait for a second vote. <laughs> Does anybody have any discussion about that? I, I thought we were going to. I mean, so this is obviously something we've been talking about for a while, probably over a year now. Uh, thanks to uh, Savant and Lisa, maybe we kind of uh, knocked out a bunch of bolts of it and then uh, ran through a couple drafts uh, to get to where it is now. Uh, obviously, this is just a, a policy for review. Uh, in terms of pay schedules and potential pay schedule adjustments, this doesn't in any way say that pay schedules will be adjusted by X amount. It just says a criteria by which they will be reviewed, and a timing, uh, an annual timing by which they will be reviewed, and it's uh, mm -hmm. particularly uh, strictly for non-represented full-time positions. So uh, all of our park guys, all of our people, and Tiffany's position. I just want to say, and Tiffany's position. It's a non-standalone. She's a part of the two herself. And Tiffany, 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 the document, the reasons behind it, what we're moving on? No? Okay. It's good that we have something like this. Yes. Yeah, the only other thing I say is part of our goal, and uh, it's just been quite a busy several weeks and we just didn't have the capacity to get it done, but uh, I was hoping to be able to go through and be able to look at uh, potential adjustments for this fiscal year that we're starting next month. Uh, we just didn't have a chance to do that, but we plan to, uh, you and I will look at that, go through and bring some potential recommendations for this upcoming fiscal year. Uh, it's been a little over a year, so just in the spirit of what this policy is, we would follow the kind of the course of that uh, and bring something to the board uh, to review for that next month. Uh, what I would say is whether we did it this month or whether we did it next month uh, wouldn't actually change any sort of an effective date, nor would it make us have to retro because of the way the timing in the first full pay period of July works out. We will be in that full pay period at that meeting. It would be easy uh, if there are adjustments to make them then, and there would be no net impact if any employees. And at that point, you'd also be able to give us that budget. Uh, yeah. I will have the full impact, but I wouldn't do it like a okay. pencil. I got to do it the following month. Thank you for that. Um, perfect. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. All right. Sure. Um, item three in district matters, financial year 2023 2024 pay schedules for all positions. We are looking to approve that too. Yeah, uh, and obviously, if we make any changes uh, next month, we'll look at things. Uh, I'll just include a, a motion and recommendation to adjust the pay schedule at the same time. This is something we just go through every year. It's kind of a ministerial thing. It actually uh, uh, came about our need to do this on an annual basis through a CalPERS audit seven, eight years ago. Uh, these are published. They're on the website. They're easy to find. Uh, these are by positions. So uh, there are some changes in here primarily to the firefighter ranks uh, because they're in multi year MLU and they will have changes coming up next year. So those have been incorporated into here. Uh, otherwise, this doesn't represent any sort of wage increases or anything like that for anybody. Uh, it just does what's within the MLU that you guys approved a couple years ago. Okay. Questions? Comments? And is there a motion to approve? Or a motion to vote? Oh. I, I just, like, my brain just, when you have for the financial 2023 to 2024 pay schedule position. So. so moved. Kathy, do you want to second? No, I'm going to do it. Second. <laughs> We're so polite and kind. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. All right. Fair. You get to keep talking. Mr. Manager, report. Who's in the Okay, well, so totally some changes to what I put in the FEMA thing here. Uh, as of yesterday and then today, uh, yesterday I went with our lead engineer, uh, Matt Smeltzer. We went down to the county planning office uh, for just a drop-in at the desk. Uh, went through, showed him some more plans and revisions that we made and eventually reached the conclusion with that particular person that if we shave 0.3 feet off of the exposed height of our retaining wall, we don't have to do design review. Um, which is a big, yeah, but I'll take it. Uh, 0.3 feet off the height. Yeah, 0.3, so it's measured, it's showing 4.3. Uh, it's not going to reduce the wall or the stabilization. What we'll do is we'll build up the downslope part of it because the exposed side is actually facing out towards the creek. Uh, so it's just a matter of reworking some of the engineering on some of the uh, bank fill coming up the other side and the, and the vegetation on that side. Uh, so that'll get us out of design review. That'll save us a significant amount of time, a decent chunk of money. Uh, they are working on that as we speak. Uh, so then we followed up with DBW and land use because they weren't sure if this was going to be a creek permit, a building permit, or both. And, uh, <laughs> but they are stating it's to submit it as a building permit under emergency repair conditions. So that will help push it through. Um, we are expecting final uh, construction plans, uh, design plans for the wall probably the first week in July, um, at which point uh, we will submit very shortly after and hopefully they can push through all their reviews, uh, the comments, and then hopefully approvals within 30 days uh, would be very nice. So, uh, like we're going to count, but I'll take the answer. It was much better than when he uh, went originally and uh, a different person at the desk who uh, said, uh, just came back with a huge list of things we would need to do for design review that was way beyond the scope of what we had to do when we built a 25 square foot building uh, just down the way. So, this is good. We can focus on the site. We don't have to come up with this huge checklist for the entire parcel, uh, which I was getting ready to uh, politely uh, so that is good. Um, so it's moving forward, and I'm happy with that. Um, then the other thing I actually learned to do about uh, recently, uh, I went through and spent uh, probably more time than I should have, but I'm glad I did, uh, looking into all of our foundation documents, Board of Supervisor resolutions from 1960. Uh, to find anything anywhere in the state that we are the responsible agency for roadway medians, I can find nothing to that. I hacked it over to City Council, uh, and City Council to County Council, who also uh, represents the DPW department. The DTW attorney and our attorney both conceded that we have no responsibility for roadway medians, and that responsibility does fall on the county, uh, which is great. Uh, that said, I'm not expecting them to just start showing up with landscaping groups and everything because that's not what the county does. Uh, they're more of a hardscape, cut it out, tear it out, hardscape, and don't think about it again. Uh, outfit. So I am uh, I'm meeting with the DPW director in a couple weeks just kind of talk about how we might be able to work together, um, identifying some of those smaller little islands that they can go ahead and hardscape whatever they want with them, uh, hopefully be able to take care of the liability that is that huge eucalyptus grove down on the uh, eastern end of North Creek, uh, and then we will continue to work on this kind of meeting right here in front of the park because I do think it helps to make the park look nice and reflects directly on our property. Uh, so we'll see where that goes, but uh, in the meantime, they did uh, tell me that they will no longer be referring concerned residents to our office, uh, which is great. Uh, small victories, but I will take it. Can I ask a question about that? Sure. So, small victories, we'll take it, but then I have a follow up question about does that change how we can approach developing it? Like, would we need to work with the county? Developing what? Well, like, people not only want it trimmed back, but they want it to look nice, but they're just going to, like, pave it over. I mean, people won't. What are you talking about? Well, just very serious. I would direct your questions to the county. Department <laughs> department <laughs> department <laughs> department <laughs> department that's the responsibility for the That's my question. Yeah. Like, that's who we need to work with. And yeah. is that something that individually? people of the community need to do, yeah. or, okay, because yeah. yeah, it's totally yeah. not board. It's, uh, yeah, no, it's absolutely, it has nothing to do with our agency, which is what I've been contending uh, for eight years. Okay. So it's, uh, I just clarify.
so respectfully delivered this request in this news story. We are going to have a meeting in a couple weeks. So uh, uh, I'm more looking at some of the bigger areas. I think those little item things, yeah. I don't know what they're going to do with. I want to make sure that they realize that, that, that Eagle of this road is a liability. It expends resources. There's a huge wind that fell six weeks ago that blocked the entire roadway. The fire department had to go out at like night, 9 o'clock at night, cut it up, move it off in the middle bay. And, uh, and one of these days, one of those huge winds is going to fall right as somebody's passing by. Yeah. So uh, that's, I just want to make sure that they're on top of that. Was that during the high wind event? It actually wasn't really. Uh, it was after a lot of stuff. It wasn't on a super windy day. I, I actually noticed it. I'm going to call down to the station to say, have you guys got thought about this yet? Uh, I was driving from my home to go somewhere, all of a sudden that road was locked, so I didn't kind of go through round three and everything, but it was a large. Yeah, because occasionally during stormy weather, oh, every time during stormy weather, weather. there's ends up. Uh -huh. uh, uh, yeah, it'd be nice to see them take care of those. I don't know what their plans would be. It would be a lot cheaper, I think, to shake them up and cut them back and, uh, and uh, open them up a little bit than it would be just to take them out. But, they're like big, huge home homes, right? Oh, uh, yeah. They're, well, they're 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 they're, 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 that would light up the whole. Well, that's, so, Thank you, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, but point being, it's on them. Uh, I know that Chief White's going to talk a little bit more about some of the open space stuff. Just a really quick note that I have. Uh, actually, I had a couple meetings recently with uh, the vegetation management specialist uh, uh, with Santa Fe Fire. Uh, they've been out, they've seen our we're looking at areas specific towards next year on some of the projects that we want to do. So, again, thank you to Chief White this week because we're always incredibly great to work with. I actually went down and joined one of their training sessions to tell their new seasonal inspectors about Marine Wood and stuff. So, they're all great. Um, California Voters Right Act. I just want to put this in here. I don't think it's anything we need to worry about immediately, but uh, this is something that could impact us. Um, and if you, you know, kind of check out a lot of the news in a lot of cities, I know Santa Fe did this a few years ago. Um, due to the California Voters' Right Act and some of the clauses in there are switching from what's known as an at-large uh, election to district-based elections, where your boundaries are separated into five equal things by demographic population, all sorts of stuff, and then you have to have a representative. So there's five seats here. We have to split this up into five boundaries. Given the fact that we're so small, um, I mean, I, I was doing math and looking at stuff. I sat in on a, uh, on a webinar led by uh, some CSDA's legal experts. Uh, you know, we have less than 4,000 total registered voters, uh, which would make it very hard. We already have challenges. That said, the people who are filing these lawsuits don't care about all that. Um, if you do get a letter on this, uh, they were saying that basically there's, the courts have imposed like, like a minimum $37,000 payout to this company to avoid having to go to trial and you adopt a position and go to these district elections. You can try to fight it. I don't think anybody's actually want it yet, but I don't think that anybody our size right now. They're focused really on larger cities. Uh, Every city, pretty much, uh, as well as some of the larger special districts and school districts. Uh, they said they come in clusters, so if agencies and Marines start getting these letters, uh, there's a chance that they're going to just carve bomb every public agency. Uh, our, our legal counsel doesn't have a set opinion on it, but doesn't think that this fully applies to us. Um, their advice on this webinar was, you know, they wouldn't advise switching to that large, but just keep in mind that this might be coming and keep an eye on it as it kind of progresses because they seem to move geographically. Uh, at least new, and they were showing numbers of some of the cities uh, and towns that have tried to fight this and are into millions of dollars in legal fees and then eventually switch to district elections. Anyway. So because you also have to pay their legal fees. Yeah. And they fill out like 900 out. Yeah, we, when we did our training company, they mentioned that this was starting that they were starting to look at. So, we uh, it's similar to the workshop of these guys. Yeah. So, this is just more of a heads up. I'll keep an eye on it. Um, right now, they don't advise that we do anything, but just certainly something to think about. But how would we divide it up into five? Well, you have to hire a demographic demographer or anything else to, uh, you know, look at what your population is, what your uh, demographics are in that population, because you've got to try to connect it into five um, demographically equal zones. So, you have the equal number of people, the demographics are kind of spread equally, or uh, so that you're not having to wait in one direction or the other. Uh, the, there's a system that we have, but we wouldn't do that ourselves. We would outsource this to the monitor. It'd probably take like a year and a half. Uh, the whole process time. There's a handful of public hearings that have to go through, and ultimately, it's. And what happens when people don't step up to run? Oh, that's the, that, that is one of the counter arguments, but they've said so far the counter argument doesn't have a lot of work. Okay. Because that was definitely something nice. I bought it before, but I was, you know, we have a hard time filling the five seats in that large style. So you're going to whittle me down to I have to find one person out of this pocket of 100,000 people. Uh, that's going to become, you know, less than 750 people if you do the math. So it becomes tricky to find the perfect people and how you break it up. So um, anyway, okay. we'll cross that bridge anyway, and uh, hopefully we don't need to. Uh, and then finally, just a quick little note here. Um, I'll do another thing too. Uh, We've been budgeting it for years now, expecting it to happen. The community center furnace finally uh, uh, okay. gave its last bit of life uh, to us, so we had that replaced. So we were able to move really quickly on that. Um, thanks to Luca and his team for some of the help on just helping coordinate that they were out quick. Uh, replaced the furnace, um, made sure everything cuts it out right. Um, so we were able to have, because I know it says furnace, but that's also got the coils and powers of coils that blow the, the air conditioning because it's a split system. So uh, luckily it has one or two hot when it went out, but uh, everything's fixed, um, which is good. But they did mention that you know, they're also aging. Uh, cooling systems up on the roof too, so uh, compressors, so keep an eye on those. So uh, for now, I'd say, uh, I know we budgeted for the furnace, I'll just keep that in place just, uh, as a just in case when one of those goes out. Uh, the other side is, is still relatively newer. Um, it's all about the side of building these two systems, because um, there's four split systems that serve the entire community center and separate setups for the fire station. Uh, and then finally, the other thing I would bring up, um, Talus Reserve, uh, which is the development that's occurring, uh, what's going to be the extension of Elm Drive. Uh, they are making some movement. Uh, if you've driven by, you've probably seen all the story poles and everything that's up. That's 28 lots, um, and I believe 22 of them are also going to have ADUs uh, attached to them. Uh, there are ways out from breaking ground. They're still like, um, in preliminary. They've broken it up into two different projects. They're still in the preliminary stages of design review. Reason this up is because they did submit their streetlight proposal, uh, which we are the authority for. So for the first time in a long time, there's potentially going to be six new streetlights put into, uh, into Marinewood. I have a meeting with uh, somebody from DPW, somebody from planning, uh, uh, as well as the developer and the DC electric to make it full joint so that they can mail the info that I need uh, to make sure that we're getting the right kind of lighting and the right temperature, the right wattage, everything else. Uh, and ironically, uh, that uh, that meeting, the planner on that meeting happened to be the planner who was working the counter when we were in there yesterday. So she said, oh, I've got this other meeting in the neighborhood. I'll be in. She's like, you're here, email. So, uh, uh, small little county. Uh, the one good thing, though, and the developer is uh, comfortable with this, is we've asked them to provide us. It's not going to be your standard street lights. They want to do a more decorative style. They said that uh, once you're done, you need to provide us with two or three spares. That DC Electric says they'll store on site for free if there's any problems. Uh, we'll have whole pictures that they can just come out, replace the picture,
Yeah, uh, in much the same way we're on the hook with the pictures. No, 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 I, I just want to be. Oh, yeah, no, they would eventually, they would essentially become a property. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then they would add six street light store maintenance contract, which is 91 cents per light per month yeah. uh, for this style, for an LED style. Yeah, like, yeah, originally they want 12, they have property taxes. I have the lower on the picture. Well, 28, uh, well, 20, yeah, well, plus you'll get 28 units times 15, and I get the math, it's like $425 or something and, uh, extra per year out of that. So that will balance itself out, and considering that they're new and well hold parts, I can't envision a lot of maintenance. No, no, and it'll all be underground, too. So. Utilities will be underground? Oh, your utilities will be underground. Nice. I don't think they do overground utilities anymore for anything. I have a question. Remind me again, the FEMA, once we get all this done, then it gets submitted to FEMA and gets approved? Once, as we go through this and we have plans that the county will accept, we will then, uh, it'll also, FEMA will kind of happen concurrently. We will submit plans to FEMA at the same time as we over there review at the same time as we're submitting them. We'll also have that justification as to why this is our proposed fix. The county doesn't really care about that. FEMA does because they utilize various different models on, here's the problem, here are the different models we have fixed, and if we're going to propose something different, they want to know why, what's the justification, uh, even though it might be more expensive or whatever the case, it might be the proper way to do it. Once they approve that, that is when they will obligate the funds okay. uh, based on you know, professional estimates of what we think it'll cost. If we, if we get it done less than that, uh, we keep the money, if it costs more than that, we submit a change to them, uh, and then they give us more money. And the whole project, which we still anticipate, would be $100 million. Dollars. It's a much simpler process because that's that necessary a small project. Yeah, anything over a million is a funding project. On that note, then, um, since the plans are being submitted, we're talking July possibly, mm -hmm. uh, the approval would be 30 to 60 days, then we're running into October. Well, this is why we're putting in for emergency uh, repair. So, okay, the approvals would be able to get done in 30 days or less. Yeah, because we, we've done the backwards math good. and still think that we can, uh, yeah, and also keeping in mind this is going to have to public bidding, it's going to be a 30 day process in its right. own right. Uh, yeah, no, there's, there's no restroom weary on this one. Uh, that said, uh, it's, it's fairly critical that we get this done this year before the next rainy season. And, we're and is it looking like it will probably be the same time as we're doing the construction? Construction, very well, could be. Will they access that way? Oh, yeah. Now they'll be going to the side of the pool and uh, having the, that. There'll be a staging area. Depending on what the different types of the work are, we're looking to stage. Also on the other side of the creek, in that little pump out uh, right on the other side of the bridge there, uh, they will need some access this way because the wall obviously will be right this side here. We're talking about you know, cutting back some bedrock, winding the channel because you're going to narrow the channel. It's all hydraulic and water flows. And Is there a chance models. we will close the pool already? No. That's not part of our plan right now. Um, and looking at it, it will disturb a little bit, but at the end of the day, just got to figure it out. Done. Okay. But right now, our plan isn't to close the pool down it unless we absolutely have to, but not here. Perfect. Good to hear. I had a question because we're talking about lights, and let's say we have to replace our lights. So how how do we how do we fund that? What do you mean? So if we have a light fixture, like a lamp that's go down, we just is that our job? But how do we? No, we have funding within the streetlight budget that comes from that. It just okay. come out of the maintenance portion of it. Um, certain things are automatically covered. Hold goes out or whatever. They they get replaced as part of our annual maintenance contract. That's not an extra charge to us. Okay. If it's a wiring issue, and they have to send somebody out, then they charge us. You know, their their time and materials rates, uh, which are agreed to under contract with the Marin County General Service Authority. Okay. And at what point do we consider changing out which lamp we have? I'm just asking because we never do. No. Okay. No, those ones actually aren't that old. Everything got converted to LED. I want to say it was around 2011 or 12. Yeah, it was before. It was before I was elected. Right. Yeah. No, looking at old emails, I want to say somewhere around 2011 yeah. or something. And uh, I think you came on bill in 2013. Yeah, I think. And so, so it was. Uh, yeah. But no, I mean, those are pretty simple structures attached to PGE poles. Yeah. Okay. You know, we don't, none of them actually have our standalone street light poles. They're all attached to the utility poles, and it's the one that's better than that. Okay. Oh, yeah, we are doing on a fire department manager. This one's still me. Uh, for resolution oh, yeah, resolution. Sorry. Uh, this is, so. Yeah, this is a motion to approve the resolution 2306, government code section 21156, determination right. of disability status for application of investor disability retirement, submitted by an employee. Right. And your job is to consider the merits of the facts as they were presented to you, which is he uh, was in general job, a workman's comp claim that was accepted. He uh, has a competent medical opinion that he can no longer perform uh, his duties as a firefighter, that he was in permanent stationary, and uh, you have used medical records to the extent needed uh, and made available to you. I'm not sure if we're All in favor? Aye. 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 Good evening. Um, I'm going to start. Actually, I'm going to jump over real quick to a news release, if you don't mind. Yes. Um, I just received this today for immediate release. That, um, we got control burn scheduled on June 15th and 16th, north of St. Vincent, but east of 101. Um, there's going to be a prescribed burns from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. on both days, and they're expecting that there's not going to be significant late events or anything else that contribute to uh, anything that may be of concern. We didn't know a couple of years ago this happened, and the wind shifted and blew right back into um, our summer camps and things of that nature, so they're going to be on the lookout for these things again. Um, there's going to be quite a few folks here, roughly about 120 people, um, approximately 80 of them should be seasonal folks getting training, opportunities to learn how to address um, wildfire while they're doing the prescribed burns. So, uh, that training uh, ranges from handling construction, tactical communications, <coughs> hose laying, and some other, I'm sure, my hope and overall exercises that kind of teach everybody what to do with the co-trail, uh, understand what they can understand here in this environment without going to an actual strike team deployment where you get a lot more work. Uh, so that being said, um, about 30 acres total, larger fuels, and it's the Marin County Fire Department that's really operating this, but it's in concert with the Bible Center and the county. And so um, we just hope that um, folks, if they see smoke, they won't call 911 because they'll be already understanding that this is taking place. I'm not sure how much more um, information has been released through it, um, other sites, social media, the radio, et cetera, et cetera, but um, the hope is that Probably there's going to be some passerbys who are passing from other communities that don't know who may radio or phone in, but at least if our members in our community know, there's no reason for alarm or concern. So, and with so many people standing by, already pre-positioned, I think it's pretty good assurance that everything's going to be okay. So, is there a time? Or is it all day? It's all days from 10 to 4, yes. Could and that's, that's when dependent and weather dependent, but generally speaking, anticipate that you're not going to see anything unfavorable that would prevent them from wanting to go ahead with the prescribed burn. Would it be reasonable to send an email to camp parents just letting them know that it's going to happen? 
and I'll be keeping an eye out. But then those people who are dropping off kids and stuff aren't going to like call in because there's no, some no, high traffic. I, we'll talk about that. Okay. Uh, I don't fully know uh, Carolyn and Robin and Luke can discuss that. And also, uh, Chief, if you don't mind, for a copy of the pressure release that we put in. Uh, I'll give you a time to do that as well. Yeah, I'll give you a quick because I'll just uh, I can put something on the next order. I'm sure the county will be able to put something on our own side as well. I'm sure I'll find the control burns and the training activities. Anybody who's here for a while, I mean, that's basically an angle. The news release is coming from your department? No, this one was released from RainCounty.org News. Okay, because usually then the IJ will pick it up and next door will have it on already. Right. Yeah. And yeah. people are going to call the next one. And it's still a thing that we all were told, like, sign up for for fire alerts and stuff. Would that be something to let people know that it's prescribed burn? Are you referring to the zone haven? No, no Nixle is what you're talking about. Nixle, you put some out saying prescribed burn. So maybe do that. I don't know. Well, they did it for the other one. Chief Weber and the county, I'm sure. Okay, great. Right. Well, some of the suggestions. Okay. All right, well, I'll be back into vegetation management. Um, it's currently underway here. Roughly 20 acres of open space are being grazed right now by 100 goats. And <clears throat> Their goal is to remove flashy fields of weeds and creating roughly a 100 foot extension or buffer away from homes. And so that effort's uh, underway right now, and it's, it says it'll remain out of area for one more week before transitioning to a four acre site of Grasshopper Hill. But there's a photo on the second page if you want to take a look at where they are now. Um, a tree service contractor to work in diligently to clear this rush on homes behind L Drive, Los Angeles Avenue, near the Miller, Miller Creek Middle School. Uh, that's going to be currently with the goat grazing effort. And so uh, they're going to move from there. Uh, but their primary goal right now is a small base of plants and trees and the other brush. Uh, but they're doing some living up with trees as well and, and just generally trying to ensure that there's not a laddering effect with any grounds or surface fires that might actually become a problem and then suddenly get into the grounds of trees and run laterally from there. So that's their goal. Um, you can see they're already highly up some of their work to come back later and pick up and remove from the site in the area. So, um, but I'm looking at the green right in the photo on the second photo of that tree. You can see the Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> just, I, I see some grass. It's probably going to turn yellow pretty soon here, um, right. given we haven't had rain. So I'm sure they're going to knock that out, knock that down, while they're picking up the tree out of debris as well. Um, Two events. First time I actually attended the Marine County Survivor Celebration event. Um, that was hosted uh, on May 25th, and uh, one of our members, John Day, was able to receive words of appreciation um, along with one out of 100 from San Francisco Fire Department from this individual who's moving down the line and shaking hands. And in, in essence, the individual had an abdominal aneurysm that is otherwise considered deadly. Mm -hmm. And somehow or another, this individual was able to survive with the care that we provided initially on scene. And then moving forward, everyone else that had hands on this patient um, from the emergency uh, department all the way through to um, post-operative treatment and care, and he's one of the success stories, one of the rare success stories, and so they wanted to celebrate him. Um, ironically, or unfortunately, his wife actually passed on after his incident, but he's still doing relatively well and, and moving forward, and grateful to be alive, and, and grateful, obviously, to everyone there who helped ensure that he's here today, as opposed to um, someone else's memory. And so as a result, that was a very um, moving event. There were several different stories um, that covered a lot of potential tragedy and hardship, but they returned into success stories, and people were able to overcome some sort of um, medical or traumatic injury that otherwise would render them you know, deceased. They're here right now because of all the work that our first responders in those emergency room um, doctors and others um, have done to ensure that they have a fight chance. And so if you've never attended, um, once a year, uh, I think it's been something they stood down on for a couple of years because of the pandemic they had last year. I was not able to attend. Um, I think it was late last year, not in May, but I think sometime around September last year. But it looks like something that they're certainly looking to um, maintain momentum with. And uh, so Mike Mayback from Channel 2 News was the MC. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, just very, very great, very great uh, moving event. So I was glad I was able to attend this year. Um, the following week, Neverstop 2023, a huge success. Yes, that was my first time I didn't make it last year, but a huge success. Um, they estimated roughly somewhere in the neighborhood of 4 to 5,000 people yeah. compared to the first year, where it was just on the island of the Marine County Civic Center. They actually expanded beyond that island area and took up a good portion of, I guess, where you see normally the fairground activity. And there were vendors with um, different devices and different constructs that were designed to reduce vegetation and wildfire risk. Um, there was some mechanized block that went around and basically torched the earth in front of it. And, yeah, there, there's <laughs> quite a few things. And you'd be surprised, this thing was very effective at what it did in the video. I didn't see it demoed in person, but it looked like something that some of the smaller agencies could definitely benefit from to save money on the vegetation management costs. Um, so with that, that was just one example. Um, there were other individuals there with landscaping and information that um, would help you identify how to best design your landscape, whether it's your front yard or your backyard, um, the fire-resistant materials and um, species that are fire-resistant, along with um, just a, um, a variety of different scenarios that you could look at and choose from. It didn't say just take away these different species. They had set up demos, photographs, and even actual um, demos on site that gave you options to kind of choose from to, to see how you wanted to actually do your landscape and you eventually looking to reduce your fuel risk or fire risk, rather. Um, the other thing that was unique about that was we had the, um, the visit from Ann Prelock and Mark Brown and Council Member Rachel Hertz. I saw Assemblyman Dan Connolly there. Uh, there was a great turnout of a lot of folks who wanted to, to be present and also um, see what was new this year. So I'm just I'm anticipating next year this thing's going to grow and probably include that island area where it first started because it just seemed to garner that much um, attention. So uh, it's funny, I, when I got there, it was maybe about an hour and a half before it ended. I had two other events that day. There was a the third line band, I think they called them from Louisiana and New Orleans and that area. They were playing loud, live music, loud too, but playing live music and trailing around with their horns and their step and dances. And I was told it was a live fire demo. It may have been that burn but I missed the demo, so I didn't get to see what happened. But, um, I think the NWPA had a booth set up there because they were asking all the directors for to check in with given times if they could be there. Mm. So, okay. Did you do it? I was in Italy. I couldn't. Oh. So? Sorry. You run around around the globe, you can't hide, right? I'm enjoying the rain there. All right, and then, well, I'm going to jump real quick and just, you know, touch again on our department statistics for the month. Excellent turnout, uh, total response times. I had a conversation with a few folks from the Peninsula the other day, and I was bragging about our turnout, total response times here, and they just looked at me, they had like a blank stare. So I, that, that told me enough. They told me their response times were nowhere near ours, because they didn't even count with any minutes or seconds or anything. They were like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, we just respond. <laughs> and we know where we're going, obviously. <laughs> so, so, yeah. And then, um, last but not least, the Marine Wildfire Commission Authority on Thursday, May 18th, um, the board of directors actually approved the 2023-24 work plan and the budget that was developed in concert with that work plan for a whole host of activities. And hopefully, one of them will include the, the new media work. Now we see that the county
uh, so many other projects that they've been working on. And keep in mind, this is the fourth iteration now of Workland, considering it was just three, or three years ago that um, the Measure C funding actually launched it at the Workland. So this is the fourth effort that's being streamlined even now as we speak, and Greelock doing an exceptional job of ensuring that the projects continue to build on each other, but um, doing so with um, less emphasis and work being required from the California Environmental Quality Act portion of this, which can really be very time consuming. Um, she set up the process now with things, and key subject matter experts are able to get these projects moved with um, a little more uh, focus and or um, lack of need for renewal. It's probably a better way for me to say that, but the idea is some, some projects, if you go and you keep going over and over again, you have to go through this iteration over and over again. So her goal is to get the projects carried for a longer period of time so you don't have to go back and um, solicit their approval. Um, there's still grant funding available. Those who are doing their own chipping, please reach out again. There's still additional money available that can be allocated towards um, the debris pickup and or chipping. And there's other funding available for you know anything ranging from signage, auditory alerts, and in fact, I just had a conversation at the summer kickoff last week with someone who was concerned about parking in one of the areas, one of the few areas where she feels like there's um, a potential challenge for apparatus to get past um, park cars that are parked on both sides of the street. At least you said it'll see her heel, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Yeah. So um, that being said, uh, I'm having additional conversation with staff to ensure if that was an accurate location, and if it's not, we'll try to figure out exactly what the location was that she was concerned about. But she, she felt strongly that two things: one, her neighbors weren't doing their due diligence with trying to remove some tag cypress and some other species, and then the other was the concern about how to um, get our apparatus in and out of there if there's an emergency. I think I heard her say Cedar Hill, but I could be mistaken. But um, I'll, I'll probably make sure. <laughs> yeah, I see a couple of like Cedar Hill. That's what I'm talking about. 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 That's what I'm talking I just all of us go. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Anybody have any other questions? I don't have any questions. I just have a personal thank you um, to our fire department and pass it to you first. Um, I happen to be at a backyard family gathering for a graduate on Sunday afternoon, um, and one of the senior members of our community was there until the fall, um, and uh, and definitely needed some emergency care. And as usual, our fire department and the um, emergency uh, personnel that came along with them were phenomenal. Um, not only did they get there quickly, they um, really like. I was very impressed with. Once they were on site, how quickly they just showed their professionalism, um, and there were a lot of people in this backyard, um, and how they just kept the whole situation calm, um, you know, and as usual, just completely amazing. So, oh, thank yeah. you, Mike. Sorry, I passed that along. Do you remember what day? It, might have been it, was, it was Sunday afternoon. I know. Uh, yeah. Okay. I know. John Popovich was on scene. I chatted for a little bit. Okay. So, all right. That's helpful. Can you make another one? Just stop. No. Definitely. Yeah. It was great. Right. It was great. Uh, so, thank you. Thank you. Um, I have like a comment slash question. Um, so this weekend, I got alerts from various Jewish neighbors in the area. Apparently, Chabad was having a uh, defensible space they reached out to the county for. And people are in heightened alerts. And I was wondering if moving forward, if they're doing places of worship or anything, they could just put a little sign. Because there was a lot of texting of like, why, why are there police at Chabad? Like, what's going on? Who knows what's going on? So and they could just have like, those little pop up things when it's a place of worship so that people don't start thinking that it's like an active shooter. I don't know why people thought it was, but this is the text that I was getting. So I'm just. Can, can you help me with a little bit more background? So Chabad is on, what is it? I don't already towards the Sally Elementary. Okay. And it's literally just, it looks like a home that has a small sign that says Chabad of uh, Marin. And apparently they had. Asked the county to come and do like defensible space stuff, and so there was, oh, demo was okay. yeah, and they were training, and there was no alert to the neighborhood. And mm -hmm. considering it's a place of worship within the neighborhood, and also, um, unfortunately, our I'm Jewish and other Jewish neighbors are very, I'm very much high alert due to various and just many things that occurred recently. So I'm just asking for uh -huh. fire when they're doing when they're going out and doing these things in the place to just maybe people will pop up saying training. Oh, yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. Did you know if it was sure this was, or was it just it was a Sunday? It was a Sunday, okay, it was Sunday. Text, yeah, okay. or, or Saturday, it was Saturday, okay. I'll, I'll double check with the follow up was on Sunday. Where she, the Chabad rabbi finally got on next door. I was like, no, we're okay, we actually requested to come out, it was a training thing, okay. but like clearly, maybe they can, maybe, maybe they can, but also, I, I was surprised that there wasn't Some something, sort of especially when, yeah, but it's a training because I remember when they go through and they do the assessments, they for a while putting up a little tripod saying they're going around, like. No, no, I'll, I'll follow up with Chief Weber on Thursday, the yeah. Morning Fire Chiefs Association meeting, and I'll follow up with 58 to see if they know anything about it, yeah. and if they, had, <clears throat> if they intended, and yeah. or whether or not it was, yeah. was done in the way of notification or signage. Yeah. And if not, that's a reasonable request. I think most people would probably appreciate some advance notice, and maybe you want to attend. I, I, don't, I don't even care about the advance notice. Um, I just I think that letting the community know that there's no emergency going on, it's a training exercise. Mm -hmm. Little things. Mm -hmm. You know what it calls? Yeah, no, no, I did. Don't make some frames or try to find something to yeah. set up, and maybe advance notice combined with that will yeah. you know, lead you to concern about advance. But I'll, I'll look into that and find out what I can. I'll keep looking at it. All right, thank you. Anybody else together? Which one? Oh, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll make a photograph of it and I'll let you put it through the copier and make a real version. <laughs> <laughs> no, I say that seriously because I look at the DMV has temporary places and I ain't out of paper, right? Have you guys seen those? Yeah, as long as you're in the room, you won't give me a ticket. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on to Department of Operation Matters. And we are looking to approve the following item of Marine Park Playground, the place of place of Project to be hoping to accept the recommended proposal and receive the response to the district issue request for proposals and authorize staff to enter into a contract with the selected vendor for the site with the intent to use the facility for construction of a playground. Thank you. 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 Thank Let's see. Like that SPDC is fine with the MC, the MRC game time when they came back with the requested updates from the PNR Commission that that put them over budget. All right, go ahead. Uh, well, just to add a few things here. So, obviously, you got two different reports on this. The first one uh, also gives you some background on what you know what brought us to that point. At that point in time, had a very good meeting with the Parking Rec Commission. Uh, there were actually a handful of board members who came through with the proposals as well, uh, which was great. Uh, good discussion, I think, amongst there. That will really down to kind of two distinct proposals, um, one each from uh, two different vendors. Uh, to some of the points that were made earlier, uh, there was one that was kind of all wood and all natural. It was well over $100,000 over the budget and actually kind of lacked uh, and really didn't bring a lot of interaction to the table. Uh, these ones that did come in, uh, you know, all of them, 
for the most part, try to kind of stay within budget. The one thing that we always kind of hoped on this would be to, uh, you, know, you, know, you never know until you get current pricing on things, but are we able to kind of stretch the allocated funding we had to take care of the main part, uh, the main playground as well as the top playground? I think it became pretty clear that the, the best use of these dollars at this point in time was to maximize them on the main playground and uh, forego the top playground for the time being. We can speak to that a little bit later, uh, maybe just in terms of the condition of the top playground and how much uh, longer useful life. At least my understanding is we still have uh, good accessibility to replacement parts and components, uh, which was a big problem with the main playground. Um, at the PR meeting, they did ask us to go back and request some further information as well as a couple modifications uh, from the two different vendors, one being Game Time, the other being uh, Spec, uh, which is a specialized play equipment company. Um, they both got back to me yesterday, which is why you got uh, this updated report uh, late last night, which did get noticed and pushed out to uh, the public as well. Um, when they came back, uh, to be clear, um, they. Luke and Robert and I all kind of went back, we looked at it, thought about the comments that were made. And they, it, the game time proposal, while they did change out some of the things, we asked them to change out actually increase their, uh, their proposal by about $20,000 over budget. Um, and to be quite honest, it's still going to compare to the spent one. The spent one was just it was far superior. Um, it's not boring by any stretch. Uh, and in fact, it greatly enhances the playground. All of the parts are actually made in the USA, um, and they cost a lot more than $15,000. But it is uh, going to be a uh, in my opinion, I just, I mean, you've seen the pictures that I included. Um, I tried to give you what the relevant information was. I think it'll be an absolutely a transformative project that will happen there. Uh, our strong recommendation is to uh, authorize the staff to accept a proposal and a contract with a specialized play equipment company uh, for their proposal. You see it there. Uh, basically, start working on getting project done. Uh, construction timing would probably be right around October. Uh, they need about 16, 18 weeks lead time. Doing the math and everything, they should be able to have the same up by the end of October. Any questions? Good, sir. Awesome. Oh, my other question um, there was discussion at the PR commission meeting about. The, the, the piece that was behind yeah. the, um, yeah. the swings about possibly we, switching that out, can we do that? Those have already been eliminated. Uh, they haven't been switched out because as we kind of went back through and noticed that there was part of the work that we want done is to have them pull back all of the existing uh, wood fibers that are there, the wood chips, the fall material, mm -hmm. and then to redistribute that. And that was actually packed in as an adult, so they made some, which would add close to 15000 to their original $215,000 budget. What they did was we actually said, you know, remove, after I looked at it, some pretty detailed email to them literally that night after the PR meeting, that, uh, probably technically speaking the next morning, I think, uh, it was uh, just said, you know, uh, clarify that this is not part of your overall bid. Here's kind of where our budget is. Our addendum certainly called for this work to be included as part of your proposal. Uh, so they actually removed the stem equipment and changed up one other component that really I don't think has any level of uh, impact, uh, let alone a significant impact. Uh, just removing a couple pieces and replacing them with something else that were just kind of some climbing blocks that entered into an area and were able to get everything done and also uh, add a line for uh, to have one of their people here to accept the delivery, move it to a staging area, and do everything else too. So they're really going to be a complete turnkey solution. They've actually been incredibly responsive. To Game Time MRC's credit, they also were incredibly responsive. Uh, and that was a quality proposal, in my opinion. Uh, it just didn't have the same use capacity. It didn't have the same uh, variety of different elements uh, and activities. Uh, that the game time one has, I mean, that the spec one has, I think spec really nailed it on maximizing the space. Uh, and I actually I, I actually appreciate that they are completely moving the swings and then adding swings to a different area, which I think for the swing activity is going to make it much safer. Every time if you stand up the playground for more than 15 minutes, you'll see a higher one close calls where the swings currently are. And then just so I think maybe one or two minutes, yeah. Uh, so I, I, just, I think this is, and Luke, please chime in, but uh, you know, Luke and Robin, I, I'm really leaning on, on them and their feedback. I certainly agree with everything, in my, their opinion. my opinion is the same as theirs, but these people spend a lot of time, dedicate a lot of time understanding playground safety, uh, and things along those lines. Robin and Kirkwood are out there using this all the time. I think it has a very nice breadth. While it's technically designed for five to 12 year olds, there's a lot of components that younger kids will still enjoy. I think that was lacking a lot more in the game time proposal. Uh, again, for the game time to be able to add a small amount of use capacity added $20,000 to the proposal, it just, it just lacked, to be honest, uh, when you compare it to this. I think if we didn't receive this, game time would have been a strong contender, and I would have been fine recommending it, but ultimately, mm -hmm. what I think the best proposal is just want to be on the table. I think that it's really going to be just I don't think it's going to be boring. I think kids and families are going to be excited about it. Uh, and it's really going to take off for that. Once it's done, uh, it'll be a real destination playground for a while. Let's be honest. All of a sudden, have kids on that playground, and the areas are met with the younger kids are never where the younger kids want to play, anyways. They always want to go where the big kids are. So, I don't know. That was like. Uh, I just want to commend the, the commission. I thought that was a really great um, discussion at that meeting, and um, I really it gave uh, staff, gave us a, a different, a lot of different perspectives with which to look at the, the playground proposals, which was really yeah. helpful. And um, only kind of further uh, cemented kind of why we were leaning towards the, um, the, the spec proposal. But um, today, uh, Rob and I were at the playground watching the you know, we two days into our summer camps, and um, we were looking at the kids on the playground and just like talking about, okay, this is what this would be, you know, looking at the, with, the, with the playground proposal um, in mind. And we're just like extremely excited about the prospect of um, now enhancing the playground's potential with this um, with this upgrade. So we're very excited about it, and I really appreciate all the feedback we got from uh, the commissioners and also. Uh, the board member, so um, we're definitely going to look at it. Yeah, and this will be 98% of what else we need to do. I mean, there still is some level of uh, funding that often be dedicated towards after this. Uh, it might wind up exceeding the total grant funding match combo, but again, also, you know, through the Kelly Wishers Foundation, through uh, very uh, generous uh, donations in uh, Dave's memory, uh, we certainly have some donations intended to be for this. I mean, as a staff, we definitely want to look at replacing the water fountain that's in there. There might be a need for additional fall material. There are some requirements for signage uh, because this is coming through state. Funding, uh, so there needs to be some signage uh, acknowledging that. So that's one of the requirements. We also want to put in some other fund, uh, signage that we, you know, kind of acknowledging some of the generous contributions towards making it happen. Uh, and then uh, possibly some, once everything's in there and laid out, these are all things we can do in house, but you know, maybe adding some extra seating or something like that to uh, a good portion of the game time proposal was putting in seating, and that's the kind of stuff we can do. Uh, the spec proposal was also that we would never design in house um, every aspect of it. So it was, just, it was a really good proposal. They were very communicative, they were very responsive. Um, I appreciate it. I, I think that they'll be good work with their highly reputable. They've sent good references, good projects, uh, following up on a couple of them. Everything was like just good, good work. So. Right. Any other questions or comments? Motion to approve. Second. I just say thank you to Luke and Jordan for doing all this work to get us to where we are and say I was we were thinking about it, so that when we did get here, we already kind of had an idea of what work. But, all right, all in
It'll be fun. When we wrote it in, they're on top of it. They got to take care of everything and nailed everything. So uh, right. hopefully it'll be you a little know, intrusion on the other staff. You might not have to apply for a None of this one. I specifically wrote that in the other field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, all permits is responsibility. They awarded better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that'd be great. Um, the other thing I did want to mention is I think when they kind of put the final uh, timing on there, I think they're looking at one week for demo and two weeks for install. So it'll probably be anywhere from three to four weeks of the playground will be shut down. But if there's a good time to do it, October is a good time to do it. And are we going to change cause? Uh, we will work with them with the colors and the colors team. Uh, they will work. Although I thought that they closed. Did you say you guys the color? No, not us. Are we going to do coloring? Changing colors? I meant the Royal League. Apparently, the board doesn't get to do anything. But I meant the Royal League. <laughs> yeah. We'll work with the vendors. It'll be. It'll be. Luke. Robert. There was a discussion about coloring. All right, moving on. Recreation and park maintenance activity reports. That's not for us. I'm going to work on that. Should have kids to do that. Thank you. Uh, so, biggest news, this is our uh, second day of our summer programming, and uh, things are going extremely well. Uh, it feels a lot farther in than just two days. Not, not in a bad way. Uh, it feels like, I think it's a, I think in a positive way, it just feels like the things are running so um, kind of clockwork, it's just like we've been doing this for a long time, and, and, uh, and I was totally yeah. thinking about a bit this summer. But, uh, and um, yeah, we've, we've, it's been going really well, both on the uh, summer camp uh, side and at the pool with swim lessons and uh, running, running the summer rec and, and all the staff in here. It's been very busy and very exciting. Live. It's my favorite time of the year, so I'm always excited to go to the summer. Um, but I want to I commend Robin and John Paul um, just a little bit. We, this last few weeks has been uh, just a really huge workload for, for both of them. They're just doing all this. Um, last minute preparation and running all these uh, staff trainings. And these are things that can't be done more in advance as we just predict the, um, a lot of our employees back from college and getting out of high school and sports ending and things. We just have to get tied all in right about basically the weekend, the weekend before summer starts. And um, Robin's run like I mean, a dozen CBR classes this, this last season just to get all of uh, the you know, hundreds of staff uh, recertified and through all the first day of CBR training. And um, I helped her a little bit, but she did the, the line share of all that. And, uh, and then John Paul ran all sorts of pool attendant, swim instructor, uh, lifeguard, uh, senior lifeguard trainings, getting everyone on the same page enough to speed. It's been a whirlwind of, of uh, trainings going into the night, coming on the weekends, uh, along with doing all their normal job duties. And uh, that's, the, that's the way it is every year, but uh, I've just been working uh, extremely hard this, this last few weeks, and especially this last few days, um, this last week itself. And they're putting long hours, uh, getting here late, or staying here late, getting here early in the morning. And um, it's been, uh, I'm very proud of them. And uh, seeing the way that our summer camp staff and our pool staff operate these first few days has been. Um, it's just been really amazing. It's, it's running Coelho machine. We had, uh, today we had uh, a lot going on. We had um, some kids lose their lose teeth. Uh, <laughs> we had a couple minor injury, dog ball injuries. We had uh, there's just a, a, bunch, a bunch of different random things that happened. Sometimes a lot of them one day, all, all unrelated, all random. And to see the staff just like handling things and uh, kind of like running like camp incident triage, and everybody was just taking care of business and uh, communicating well. And there were no issues that I had to come like intervene or feel like, oh, we need to change this. We just working the way we feel it works. And I was um, like, wow, this is great. And uh, down at the pool, all the swim are going great. The, the lifeguards have a lot of new lifeguards that we were really hired this year, which is, which is awesome. And um, and that whole program is just running super well. Everyone was just taking care of business and really So um, I was. I'm really excited this last uh, two days to see how well on summer, you know, the start we're off to in summer, and um, it gives me a lot of encouragement for uh, the rest of the season. But I want to say thank you to John Hall and Rob specifically because they have these huge programs that they're overseeing and they really put the work in to make sure it's starting on the right foot. So uh, thanks to them. And um, the other programs that are going on uh, besides camps and uh, swim lessons, we also have our guards and training uh, program that's going on at mostly based the pool. And that program is really big this year with a lot of good enrollment. And then our CIT program, the counselors and training that we have um, with uh, this kind of school kids working in our camps, running ropes, helping out. And those programs are, are really big this year, and that, that's that those are about the future in employment, you know, able to um, hire from uh, these kids on the from 15. And so uh, those programs started out uh, with, with bangs this week. We're really excited about that. Um, I've got two kids in camp this week and um, handed some lessons, and they're both, uh, they could not stop talking the whole ride home the last two days. Just like, this happened, that happened, I learned this, but that, I wouldn't have it, you know, I couldn't even get a word in there. We're so excited to talk about it. So um, really excited about that, and I hope that goes well for the rest of the summer. Uh, a couple other things to know, we, we have our annual week of, um, of chaotic pool schedule uh, right before the summer. We have uh, a lot of end of the year school pool parties, and um, that those went really well. It was really fun to, to see the, the kids celebrating at the end of the school year. We had um, a couple of like, DJs and photo booths, and the kids had a lot of fun. Even though it was really, really cold and overcast and hot. Uh, yeah, on some of them, it was not the most ideal weather, but uh, the kids had a great time, and um, we're really happy to be able to host uh, those programs each year. Um, and then uh, other things I just wanted to mention is our next community event is going to be the first installment of the Music and the Art series, which is a week from this Friday on uh, January 23rd. And, um, uh, we've got a great lineup, uh, which is now up on our website. We're pushing out emails this week about the bands and the info. We're in the market providing food at all of our events that are taking place every other Friday, with, um, instead of the one in the middle, that will be our summer group fest on that Saturday, which is on July 22nd. We've got four uh, days of music in the market, one group fest this summer, and all that's coming together. We're really excited to bring this back this year. So um, keep an eye out for those. We'll get to all make it. Those are Fridays from 6 to 8 in the park. And um, that's the uh, recreation activity report. Um, before we move on to the parks and activity report, um, does anyone have any questions? No, I'd just like to um, tell you that I'm really excited because we're not all. Yes, there's lots of dot ball, dot ball, dot ball, every ball. So, yeah, so good. And just to thank all every year that you guys work so hard and it comes out so well and do all the training. Because I know myself and other parents, their kids come home just like yours, and they love the punishing. They're amazing, foster. I have amazing staff that you guys provide. So just, just thank you. 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 The Parks Maintenance World, um, we've had some tree work done uh, right before the summer, trying to get uh, some, some trees cleaned up in the park, and also we moved one tree that was uh, overtaken with termites. Uh, and we want to make sure we got that out before it uh, causing any damage or was a hazard. And we also have tree work and some other clearing and cleaning up happening in the medians uh, along the road. Um, these have been in discussion a lot. Um, we had some, do we have to do that anymore? Uh, uh, well, we did have some money left in the budget, and uh, we figured we could make, uh, make some improvements, uh, you know, now, um, and maybe, maybe the county will want to take that over and be able to take that on. But right now, we're trying to get things cleaned up to the point where our, um, our landscape uh, contractor would, would be better able to maintain. So getting
it's just south of um, a creekside park. Uh, it's kind of hidden away in the, in the woods, but there was a bunch of, of stuff seen. We were worried it was an encampment, but it ended up just being. Um, other, I, I, it seems most likely it was just hanging out. I mean, nothing too um, egregious out there, but a bunch of stuff. And they definitely messed a lot with, with the foliage, and, um, and there was a lot of damage and things that we're not happy about. But the staff really got there and removed all of the, um, the debris and equipment that was left out there and, and did a kind of disease assist. And we've been monitoring that area since. And it doesn't seem anyone's been back, um, but that was a lot, a lot of stuff to haul out. So um, we're happy that the, uh, the residents alerted us to that because it wasn't visible from the road. It was not visible if you were hiking some of the trails out there. So um, staff figured that and now it's kind of part of our, um, our patrol, just making sure that, that it doesn't pop back up and that we can let that area rehabilitate. Um, so not a lot of damage, but um, we definitely don't, don't like it when people are not being examined digging and stuff. So um, also we'll continue to deny on if there's any problem there. I'll definitely uh, update, update you. Um, another thing I want to mention is just um, that you might have noticed the Tasha Table Lobby. We, we do have um, some new drinking fountains that um, we were able to purchase with uh, money from the Lions Club, a uh, generous donation from the Lions Club. And um, those are we're working on getting those installed. These are going to be an improvement on our existing water fountains so that they have, they're going to be filtered chilled water with um, a bottle filling station. And um, we're working on that. We have to have a plumber come in and do some reconfiguring uh, to make the, the plumbing work with the new units. And that's going to take place uh, very soon. We'll have those up hopefully by next week. And then we've got another um, duo of water fountains with a bottle filling station that's going to go down at the pool um, to replace the current water fountains down there, which will also be filtered chilled in, in bottle water, which we're really excited about. That one's going to be a little bit more involved. It's going to involve having to uh, go into the cinder block and uh, maybe a little more. So we're going to get figured out what kind of workouts can take and it might make sense to perform that. But hopefully we can get it done uh, soon during the season. And um, I'll definitely give you a bit of workout today. But that's another exciting project that's underway. Um, other projects we have coming up, we're going to be doing uh, some landscaping in the north end of the park where the, the shipping containers were living for a while. Um, we're going to rehabilitate there and uh, we'll add, so we're still working on our plan, but we're going to plan to add some turf back in and potentially a couple picnic areas there um, and, uh, and create a half uh, through that area. So um, once we finish getting some landscaping at Creekside Park, um, staff will start focusing on that. And we also have a few repairs to make almost all the normal um, maintenance activities. Um, so that's my report. Um, I'm going to questions about the parking inside. Okay. No, I think they do a great job. I'll pass that along. Um, on the, with the part that you just mentioned about the, um, the redoing that, I know I like, asked and never really followed up on that. On, I have a, um, potentially a group who would like to donate some money in, in honor of Brian DeSanto. Um, so maybe, I don't know if maybe there's a possibility that we could donate and maybe alleviate some of the financial burden with, with maybe just like a little, you know, something small. So that would be better to do the water fountains or possibly benches? No, I think we, uh, the group that I'm talking with, because that's where we held a long time ago, our 4th of July party, the Friday was a huge part of, oh, okay. it would be okay. perfect, like, yeah. geographically, would be a nice connection. Okay. Okay. So, I, that. Uh, yeah. I know yeah. there's a process that's online, so we sure. have well, to talk about it. Well, depending on what exactly we're talking about, okay. so I would, uh, let's talk offline, okay. let's see how we can take it yeah. a little more, and if we're looking at you know, some sort of like memorial or recognition, then, uh, then yes, there is a process right. to it, uh, but if we're just kind of looking at the, you know, refurbishing it, I mean, let's yeah. talk. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, I do have a question, I was at the pool this weekend multiple times for various things, the bat and the bathroom, yeah. the sink there, it's like one of them, and then the rest, one sink's on, and the rest don't turn on, is that what we're fixing? The sinks are, are, um, those are no. The sinks are just really, really old, and we've um, and they're, there's a plan to fully replace the sinks in both the bathrooms of the pool, um, which is going to be disruptive. We should probably wait until the end of the season to to do that. That's going to be a bit of a uh, demo project, and we'll do a lot there. Um, the current sinks are are have kind of gotten past their usable life. We're trying to keep them going uh, with with some you know, trying to get parts for them, but they're extremely old and outdated and, and hard to work on. And so um, we, we're trying to keep a lot flowing in there, but there's a couple that we can't get parts for. We're just trying to keep the ones that are working. Okay, because right now it's Should be two. Now it's um, I mean, yeah, each, yeah, we're aware we're keeping for a lot of time because we're trying to get a lot of them. I mean, it's just to keep the going, like still going there. Yeah. So, I was excited uh, that there was a line that we were just leaving, but besides the line that we have to go pee, there's a line to the washing hands. Yeah. So, so we're I, was, I was very proud of the kids for seeing there and I just walked out to the pool. That is a good thing about it. Um, <laughs> yeah, so there's, that's on a radar where it's a constant kind of okay. constant means to keep those things running. Thank you. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. All right, uh, are there any board members or dentists? I'll pass the future to dentists. I'll come back to my dentist last year. We'll see what this means. Not the letters cleaned up. That's not cleaned up. That is cleaned up. That's, I'm just putting that out there as I can. So I guess that's another thing that we bring up at the PNR meeting is where we're going to staff. I think we left it off is Ian was going to work, so you did Commissioner Fine was going to work, and then things got really busy to go wet, so we kind of let it go until this. So I'm just saying, I'm not sorry, I forget that. Those are up there. Yes, in the elevated open space. Right, and we also have requests for possibly looking at spots for other benches. That was another request. It was a conversation that I would be happy with Luke, that Luke will then be bringing it to the PNR. Okay, just want to make sure I'm on there. All right, other grant. If I'm not, did we already approve the trial basis of it going up there? Yeah. Okay. Just circle back. All right, is there a motion to adjourn? Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? All right, I have to go. Uh, the next day, 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 the next day,